What's the best way to put a football club on the map? A good football shirt, of course. Welcome back to Behind the Chevrons, your window into the world of Hummel. My name is Phil and I'm your host today. And you might notice if you've watched previous episodes that we're in different surroundings. Yes, we're in London, we're on tour in the UK for a few episodes. In today's episode, we'll be zooming in on Forward Madison, a team who are one of the best examples in world football in how you can put yourselves on the map with a good football shirt. So I'm here with Pete, Head of Creative at Soccer Bible. Welcome to the show, Pete. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me. Oh, pleasure, mate. Pleasure. Let's just talk briefly about the role. Like, what does Head of Creative at Soccer Bible look like? What does that mean? And maybe if you could just briefly explain as well who Soccer Bible are for anyone who doesn't know. Yeah, for sure. So uh, Soccer Bible is, uh, is a media outlet, uh, for want of a better phrase, of, uh, that covers everything on and off the pitch, a lot of the, the design, lifestyle, cultural aspects that cut through football come from a kind of like product-centered place, mm. but then stretch into all kinds of storytelling and are kind of there for, for players as much as the, the consumer of football culture, really. Mm. Um, my role is pretty broad um, in yeah. terms of covering all creative projects that we do, right. whether that's uh, releasing a magazine or creating collaborations that we do or mm. work with players or work with brands and, nice. and extended storytelling. So a lot of content creation, yeah. um, a lot of sort of coming up with ideas and, and making stuff happen, really. Yeah, nice, man. So you mentioned products just mm. then. Obviously, shirts are kind of a key product of, of, yeah. uh, of football. How, are, how do kind of shirts fit into that ecosystem? Is it like one piece of the puzzle? Kind of how does that, I guess for Soccer Bible, like is, has it been a, a thing that you've been looking at for quite a while? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's an enormous piece of the puzzle, really. Mm. Uh, I think we're kind of one of the sort of leaders in the, in the space when it came to crossing football with fashion mm. and, and bringing that, the football jersey, into more of a lifestyle environment. Yeah. Um, it's a massive thing that we talk about all the time. I think we pretty much try and cover every uh, worthy release that yeah. that comes out. That's that's not to say we we don't sort of just neglect any. It's just uh, the the football shirt world is is amazing in terms mm. of how vast and and exciting it is. It's probably few items that kind of unlock so many emotions mm. in the way that a football shirt does. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's an exciting thing and. I don't think anyone in in our kind of world yeah. doesn't get excited when they see a new football shirt, that's even it. if it's for a rival team. Yeah, that's it. The buzz never goes away, does it? No. For sure. But now let's talk about Four Madison. We're kind of focusing on them today. Um, before we look at the shirts and get get a kind of a close up of them, when did you first come across them? Do you remember kind of anything about that kind of first encounter with Four Madison? Yeah. It, I think they're such a beautiful example, as you said. Like they. I think it was a couple of years ago now, and mm. I can't remember if it was the badge or the shirt or just yeah. that color combination yeah, that yeah. I saw first, but yeah. it was like all of a sudden I saw one thing and then I was like sucked in and, yeah. and transported to yeah, kind yeah. of this, this discovery of wanting to find out more about yeah. who they are. And, and I think that's, that's such a beautiful thing that the, the power of a football shirt can really sort of take you on this journey. And yeah. all of a sudden I've got a team in a place that where I've never <laughs> been that I can sort of almost like romanticize about and That's it. set a story without knowing anything about the club. Yeah, love that. So let's take a look at the shirts now. And we've got a couple of shirts here. Maybe if we start with uh, this one here, the drip kit as it was dubbed. <laughs> so Pete, this, I think this would have been the first one. Yeah. Certainly it's the first one I remember mm. uh, from Four Madison. Just talk to me kind of your reactions even now, just to the design, any, any initial thoughts or kind of thoughts that you've had about this one? I think it landed at such a, a perfect time because it was probably at a time where as consumers of this, mm -hmm. we're all kind of like everyone, I could see the audience kind of saying, yeah. oh, not another template shirt That's for it. for other clubs. Mm. And then when you see something like this come out, it was, it was pretty much the envy of everyone, I think. You just yeah. think, oh, I'd love it if my football team did that or expressed that. Obviously, it's talking to a very specific audience, but for yeah. me, this is like, you know, heaven in a shirt. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a sucker for the sort of like pink and blue colors. Oh, yeah. I love everything like Miami Heat and that, oh, yeah, and that of course, kind of thing. Nice. Um, yeah. So it, it pulled me in for a number of reasons, but it's just like a pure expression, isn't it? Mm. it and it, there's mystery to it and intrigue. And the more you look, the more you see. So yeah. so the, obviously the first thing you see is obviously the, the color and, it, and yep. the detailing. But then when you start to sort of see the badge and then mm. how that's kind of made up and it's not, mm -hmm. it's not not conventional in any way no, it, it works not, it? for sort of creatives and designers yeah. and then there's something about the history of Hummel mm. that also pulls in because of mm -hmm. history with say like San Pauli and teams mm. like that and then all of a mm. sudden you're like oh this is like <laughs> a left field football fans That's dream it. really it is isn't it and I love my favorite thing about this one is like learning about the design I believe this kind of pattern was actually started off as like a physical art piece really the, I think the designer Cassidy uh, Semnieski she uh, I think it's called hydro dipping, and mm. then she basically was experimenting. Sick. Came up with these really cool kind of you know designs, which was then replicated. Yeah. I love it. And it's so good, isn't it? And it's such a unique look. Yeah. And it's a small thing, but like if I flip around the back, mm. one thing which uh, people often talk to me about is like when you see a shirt and the pattern is just blank on the back. Yeah. Small thing, but nice to see that that pattern goes all the way around. Yeah, so yeah. It's really cool. No, it is amazing. It, it's it really unbelievably is. recognizable, isn't yeah. it? Um, so yeah, I, I absolutely love it. Yeah. Now let's move on to another full Madison shirt and I'll bring in this shirt with a bit of a surprise, a bit of a hidden surprise. It's a reversible shirt. Maybe let's start with uh, the black side, with this side. But again, Pete, before mm. I turn it inside out to show you the other side, yeah. again, anything that this shirt reminds you of or you remember about the release? Uh, well, it's just the, the fact that you can pair up a, such an electric shirt mm -hmm. that went before it with something that's like more muted yeah. but still got a lot of character to it you know yeah, with the yeah, flamingos yeah. on it and stuff <laughs> it's it's kind of like the beauty of like you're wearing a hawaiian shirt mixed with <laughs> yeah. with football it hits that mark of like something insanely wearable away mm. from the football pitch and and again like you know everything looks good in black and yeah, the, the, this, sure. this has got like such character to mm. it um mm. And yeah, like the the use of the sort of being flexible with the sponsor's logo, not having yep. any rules yep. where it's like, it's got to stay in a certain color and mm. things like that. Mm. It's, it's all been designed to make the best looking shirt as opposed yeah. to being compromised by like rules that, that have gone before. And that's a, that's a thing, you know, like yeah. obviously whether it's the Football League or the Premier League and that massive like book that they get of all the, the rules that yeah. uh, you have to sort of abide by with shirts and that sort of thing. This uh -huh. just feels like it's just its own thing. It's where, got freedom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. freedom's such a good word for it because it's just, yeah. it's like people will just look at this and just, yeah, say, this is what I want yeah, my right. club to, to do. And obviously it's got such a strong connection to the club and uh -huh. what it stands for as well. Yeah, yeah so let's turn the shirt inside out. We mentioned it's reversible. And if you've not seen this before, you'll get a nice surprise because I'll turn it inside out and Look at this, yeah, and amazing. I love this, it's so good. Any, I mean, in terms of the kind of, the fact it's reversible, I mean, I can think of one or two kits like going up, I think United yeah. had one in, in, the, in the noughties, but like, are you surprised more clubs aren't doing this? Or do you think it's something which clubs might do more of? Uh, it it's obviously comes down to capabilities and that sort of thing, sure. and uh, it's only an added, added bonus. I don't see mm. why, why you wouldn't if you have the option to. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I think it comes, it, there's, there's different schools of thought with it because uh -huh. some people will take a football shirt extremely seriously and, yeah. and, and a football shirt can't deviate from, mm. from certain rules. And you see that with like, you know, yep. uh, big teams that have tweaked colors and things like that. Yes, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is, is so good because it, it just comes from outside the football space, you know. It does. All, all of these designs and stuff would work in a print on your wall That's at it. home or in a bar yep. or in a yep. studio. Yep. It's uh, it, it works so well on that on that level. And yeah, yeah. In terms of w why more teams don't do it, a hundred percent, you'd want more to because I think you always want to give people more mm -hmm. uh, 
to love about their their team and stuff like that. Yeah. Obviously, it, it's just got to be done right. That's sure. the most important thing. Sure. There's no point just releasing something mm. for the sake of it. And you see a lot of clubs mm. do that, where they where they th might think, oh, I've got a reversible shirt, but that's it. I'd say, yeah, do it, but do it do right. It well. And yep. if and if yep. you don't think you can do it right, then then don't do it. Everything's yeah. got to be done yeah. right. And this is such a good yeah. sort of benchmark. That's it. And it's great, isn't it? I love that it's kind of a completely different flavour to the black shirt. Mm. You know, you mentioned it's wearable, but in a different sense. Yeah. I, think, I think even the club, if I remember correctly, marketed it a bit as a kind of, you know, one for the beach and yeah, one for, yeah. the, you know, somewhere else. But um, It's such a yeah. good point as well, though, because without the, it all comes down to the storytelling that yeah. accompanies, accompanies it. And uh, yeah, you've got to have the right imagery to, to sort of tell that story mm. and make people sort of fall in love with that dream. And you mentioned kind of some of the things you'd like to see. Are there any other things which you think I'd love for clubs to do in general, or maybe even just from a design perspective, mm. you know, things you'd like to see come into the game? Yeah, I think it's probably just, it's almost like taking a step back okay. and, and seeing things like this and looking at it as a blank canvas. Mm. Not necessarily, if you're gonna take inspiration from the past, it has to push forward at the yeah. same time. And yeah. I think like these shirts show what's been done with like sublimation printing. So yes. there, there should be no excuse to being able to deliver something unique to your club. Yeah. Um, but I'd love to see other things that, and, and I'm not an expert in terms of the manufacturing process, but <laughs> when it comes to more like tactile details, mm. um, yeah. whether that's like flock printing and raised sort of embossing yeah. on shirts, just yeah, because yeah. again, it's like the more you look, the more you see. And uh -huh. if you take it home and all of a sudden you notice that there's some hidden details that's within it. the design, you're like, oh, I've, I've got something that, that, that means something even more to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other things I always like, I think it's good to sort of take inspiration from outside and yeah. say like, it could be one-off jerseys or whatever, uh -huh. but um, I love like South American jerseys that are absolutely plastered with sponsors yeah. Yeah. and stuff like <laughs> so that. I, yeah, and, yeah. and things like that where yeah. you're just, it, it's like Dairyland because you, uh -huh. you're sort of like, I have no idea what that brand That's is. It. And, and it yeah. takes you on a little journey. It's in another itself. world, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah so sure. it, yeah, you can, you can sort of like tell a, paint a postcard of, of your locality yeah. through your sponsors and that kind of thing. Yeah, um, for sure, for sure. So yeah, I'd always sort of see it as a, as a chance to be expressive and yep. and yeah, I th like I said, the, the storytelling's got to be bang on that, that goes with it. Guys, just before we wrap up, we've got a short feature from Forward Madison themselves. Let's take a look at that now. In terms of Ford Madison, I think that kit designs keep getting even more intricate, even more, I don't want to use the word cool, but you look at some of our designs from year one to year three, starting with our pink one back in year one that we used in open cup to, you know, the, the pink one with the collar, that's our first jersey with a collar. So I think in terms of Hummel as an organization, they're expanding with their jerseys. And I think it's going to be even cooler to see what they have in the future going forward. Yeah, I think their designs are something I haven't seen a lot of um, in football, that's why it's kind of it's kind of great to, to be able to wear the kits that we have because I've been on other teams where you know their their designs maybe are a little bit more plain and things like that. I think with Hummel they they go a lot uh, outside the box and and come up with new things that maybe other other uh, designers or teams haven't done before, and um, they're kind of like innovative in a way with with how they create the things they make. I think in terms of adopting a European culture, uh, you look at the color on our, our white and pink ones. It's something that we've never had in a mainly many US organizations. And I think that it's becoming more wildly accepted to follow the European standpoint, um, especially from a Jersey perspective. And I think that now that we've unlocked the first one, I'd be curious to see what Hummel has to do from a color perspective going forward. Um, you know, is there an opportunity for Ford Madison to do a blue one? Um, I've heard mixed reviews for both, but I personally do like the, the white and pink one. Just knowing that it, it is that big on like social media, that it's even reaching, you know, people that may not know about the club. I think it, that's like a really big thing for the club. Pete, thanks so much for coming on. It's been great to chat. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, always always a dream to talk about such nice kits. Yeah, that's all right. So guys, that will just about do it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Forward Madison and their beautiful football kits. And of course, we'll be continuing to see beautiful football kits here at Behind the Chevrons. We've got many more episodes to come, so look forward to that. But until then, take care, and we'll see you very soon. <laughs>